or the, comp the computer requesting the information. HTML is sent to it. They can view it, edit it if they want. I mean, it's not going to affect your actual page, but they can edit it on their local machine. But the PHP, they can't touch. It's secret, and it's only available on the server. So PHP, PHP, uh, one sec. Hey, guys, can you like be quiet? I'm making a video, and thanks. Go somewhere else. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> so PHP is a server-side scripting language. We also have uh, Ruby on Rails. There's some others, which I'm not going to go into all of them. You can use uh, Python. and some other, You can use a lot of stuff for server-side scripting or programming, whatever you want to call it. So why is a server-side scripting language good? Well. Obviously, the person who views your website can't get the code, so you can have more, more sensitive information there, and also they can't steal all of your code by uh, copying it. For example, the HTML, they can copy. A lot of the times you can take a web page and you can copy the HTML, and you can create an exact replica. That's often how people create fake websites, such as rather than typing in calebcurry.com, you type in calebcarry.com and it brings up to a page that looks exactly the same and you sign in and you put your credit card information in for your buying something it doesn't really matter well you weren't actually on the right website but it looked the same and now they have your information where they can hack you with so they can do that with HTML with um, server-side scripting language they're not going to be able to copy code and they're not going to have access to the exact code all right, so uh, what else? Well, you can connect to a database. A database, I guess I can draw this too. A database is also on the server. I'm just going to draw an arrow. At that, there's no room. It's also on the server, and this is where it can store specific information, such as user login information, um, account, the amount of money you have on an account. They can have uh, transactions to transfer money from one account. So basically accounts and a lot of information can be stored on a database such as P um, MySQL for example and that can be stored on the data on the uh, on the server as well. That's also a server side thing although the content can be sent to the client using a PHP script. So for example If we have a scoot over this way a bit. If we have a users table and we have the first user, Caleb, right? With PHP, we could say, take that name, and then we're going to echo it or print it into HTML within a paragraph tag, for example, and so forth. And then that will be sent to the client who then sees Caleb as the username, for example. That's just an example. So you can access database information with a PHP script, which can then send that to the client as HTML and so forth. So that's two main uses. That's, those are the big uses for uh, PHP. That's what we would be using them for. I'm sorry, my nose itches. So, I'm going to go through some examples of why PHP. Well, it's, it's great with integration with HTML. So, for example, you can, you can echo or print. That echo is a command that sends stuff to the client for them to view. So, anything within an echo command becomes viewable by the client. So, you can echo HTML. So, within your PHP script, you can send HTML that was developed through PHP. Same thing with HTML, you can have PHP scripts within the HTML, which won't be visible by the a client. So that's one thing. Another thing you can do is uh, with great integration, you can build website templates. So often on a website, 
you will have a consistent top bar that says home, forum, questions and answers, um, videos, lessons, and so forth. Well, that is often created in HTML, you know, but then when you go to a different page, it still stays there. Well, if you're working with strictly HTML and no PHP, for example, you would have to program that on each page. And then if you want to create an update to the title, to the uh, links bar, you're going to have to go through your entire website and edit every single page so it has a consistent top bar or footer or sidebar or anything like that. All right, so with PHP, you can create one file named header.php or whatever, and then a footer or a sidebar. Usually you have a header and a footer, which often includes a sidebar, actually. And then you can include that file within every single HTML page. So you sort of get like a, a template. So you could say this, this whiteboard is the template and it automatically comes with a, a bar at the top as well as a search bar and so forth and, and social links on the side such as Facebook and so forth and a footer, right? And then right here you could say is the content. Well you can create new pages you could say like page one and then you can make a new page page 2. By the way, if you guys haven't figured this out yet, this is for like absolute beginners. So if you're a pro PHP website developer, this video is not going to be much use to you. And I don't need any comments saying why your programming language is better and more superior and all that crap. So yeah, that's an example of something you can do. You can create templates. So then, when you update your website, you can change you can change one of these bars to add another one, and then it's going to update on every single page within your website. So that's another use of PHP. Another thing you can do is, as as I mentioned earlier, you can access database information, and with this, you can create registrations. You can create registration pages such as logins where you can sign up for a website and then you can log in and reach content that is only accessible for your website. For example, if, if I sign into my Twitter account, all of my tweets are only accessible, like, the, like deleting them and so forth and updating new, that's only accessible through my account to my specific page or for YouTube.